This week's Ion MPI by DigiKey and Adafruit, thank you DigiKey, is from ST. Lady Ada, what is this week's Ion MPI? Mm, so normally, you know, we cover ST stuff when we've done their wireless chips, and we've done their sensors. Of course, they're a massive company, so they have a lot of chips that they uh, design and come out with. Um, but I saw this pop up on um, the digikey.com slash new, and uh, what's interesting is I didn't know that such a thing existed. It's a um, GPS unit that has dead reckoning built into it, um, with sensor and uh, wheel tick, uh, you know, odometer capability. Um, so this is part of a family called Tezio. Um, and this is the VIC 3DA, uh, the A is for automotive. The 3D, I think, stands for like three-dimensional, and VIC, I don't know. But it's part of their, you know, it's automotive, but it's also really useful for robotics. So it's like, yes, this stuff is used for cars, but we know our stuff is used for cars. I also think it's um, often used, uh, really good use, often very good for use with um, art projects or mechatronics or robotics or installations or, or you know, what have you. I'm sure there's a good reason um, to use this. Um, so first up, GPS, you know, we've had GPS stuff on IMPI and of course at Adafruit, we sell um, a lot of GPS stuff. Um, there's all these constellations. Uh, the original one is called GPS um, for Global Positioning Service and that's our Global Positioning System and that's the American um, well, it's actually Global Navigation System is what you would normally call it. Um, and there's now other uh, global navigation systems available. So, um, you know, there's Beidou, there's QZSS, that's the Japanese one. Um, there, there's GLONASS, there's the Russian one, um, and there's the Galileo, that's the European one. So there's like five, five or six systems. Not all of them are up and running, um, but what's cool about this GPS unit, or GNSS unit, I'm going to call it GPS, but could recognize more than just the American constellations. It works with all of them. So that's, that's kind of good because it means that even if you don't have great visibility for one set of satellites, um, you'll be able to get um, the other set of satellites. And that's um, handy because a lot of times, uh, one of the most popular things that uh, GNSS is used for is navigation, whether it's automotive navigation or of course, um, you know, robotic navigation or human navigation. And um, you want to know where you are, and, and the cool thing about GNSS is that as long as you've got a, you know, a vision of the sky, you can use it anywhere in the world. It works anywhere as long as you can see the sky, which is, of course, the thing which is, well, what if you can't see the sky? Well, if you can't see the sky, it doesn't work at all. Um, you have to be able to see, you know, I think, three or four different satellites at a time in order to triangulate your position on Earth. Um, so what happens if you're in a tunnel, or what happens if you're in a canyon like New York City. New York City has some parts of the city where you, you pretty much can't get GPS or if you could um, it's not trustworthy because the signal's bouncing off of these uh, glass buildings um, and you're getting distorted signals and so you kind of end up sort of jumping around. If you've ever been in a city and you're like why does it think I'm three blocks away? It's because the the GPS signal is um, is bouncing around and you're not getting it um, directly so you're not able to uh, triangulate as well. So um, historically, uh, you know, the way we did, and this is kind of interesting that this GPS module, GNSS module, combines, um, you know, satellite tracking with what's called dead reckoning. So dead reckoning is, uh, you know, an ancient way of, of measuring where you are, and it's exactly, you know, kind of what you would think people would first invent for navigation. If you know where you are, and you have a map, and you know your compass direction where you're moving, you just, you know, count the number of steps and then, you know, you know where you've ended up. Um, and this is what basically, this is the only thing you could do before GNSS. I mean, you could, of course, use the you know, stars and you could use clocks and stuff to do some sort of navigations. Um, but the problem with dead reckoning is it's, um, it's very susceptible to error. You know, it's a great idea, right? If you really know exactly how many feet you've stepped in one direction, exactly the direction, then yes, of course, you're going to be able to determine where you are. But in reality, without um, a reference point or map to keep you along, you know, even a small, you know, change in an angle, um, you think you turn 90 degrees, but you really turned 89 degrees, and suddenly um, the air magnifies the more and more you go. So, you know, dead reckoning is, is something that people have done, you know, as humans, just using compasses. Um, but with technology like using uh, tilt compensated compasses, and um, you know a more calibrated way of measuring distance, not just using like knots on a rope, but like in uh, you know, nautical miles, um, but using a wheel tick counter, you can do a much better job of determining where you're at. So 
the Live3F, which is the, we're talking about the three, Vic3D, which I think is like the, the dev kit, but this family um, has the GNSS module, right, with multiple um, constellation support, so it can get data from anywhere. And it's got like data logging, it's got firmware upgrade, I'm sure there's an ST chip inside of it. It does a sit of GNSS, and that's where you um, get data from um, a web, you know, you can get data from a website or over cellular to, to help it get the um, uh, almanac of data so it can get a fix much faster. Um, but it has that odometer in it. And um, what's neat is that um, you can see that you can get a fixed rate of up to 30 hertz when you use the odometer. Like it'll, it'll actually get you data quite quickly if you've got that odometer and um, built into it is a six DOF tilt compensated um, compass. And so uh, as an aside, if you're wondering, hey, um, how come like DigiKey and Adafruit do not have any compasses in stock? Like you can't get like any electronic compass chips anymore or nine DOF sensors. Um, all automotive devices and GPSs use compasses to do uh, you know, basic dead reckoning type um, measurements. And so um, those are all going to the automotive industry. This is one of the, one of the things that it, you haven't been able to get compass sensors for quite a while. Um, so, yeah, so the, the Tezio has, is, you know, there's a firmware system. Um, it gives you NMEA data, but you could also give it, uh, it's got these two pins, forward, which is a direction, and wheel tick, and you tell it, you know, how many, you know, how, how wide your wheels are, and then, of course, it can calculate how far you've gone each direction. And then using um, the compass inside, uh, you see there's an accelerometer and a magnetometer combined together, tilt, com tilt uh, compensated, um, compass, magnetometer, you know which direction you're going, you know how far you're going thanks to the wheel tick, boom, you've got dead reckoning and this firmware does it all for you. And believe me, having had to write dead reckoning software, you don't want to do it. It's much better if the module does it for you. Um, so the module's ready to go and it's got UR, it's got I squared C, um, it's got, uh, you know, the antenna staff, control, PPS, wake up, IRQs, and of course, wheel tick and forward. Uh, you could also, um, I saw in the data sheet, you can send um, the MIA data with the odometer separately. So if you don't want to use wheel tick and forward back, like let's say you want to like literally count steps for a human, um, or maybe it's not easy for you to add a wheel, maybe there's some other way um, you're doing maybe um, a vision system to determine distance, um, you can send that data over to MIA. So it would take that and then, you know, merge it into um, what GPS or GNSS data it's got and then give you that dead reckoning output. And if you want to get started really fast, um, the DigiKey also has in stock um, this dev kit and the dev kit kind of does everything for you. So you like don't need to do the power supply in the case and the antenna. Um, it's got panel, it's got SD card for logging. I think it's, it's got some ST chip in it. It's got the module. It's like 200 bucks and it basically has everything you could possibly need. So honestly, you probably couldn't really make this for less than the dev kit cost. So if you're just, if you have a robot or if you have a car or automotive thing or agricultural um, electronics and you wanted to quickly get your dead reckoning stuff going, um, add this in. I think this, I think dead reckoning is a good alternative where you can't use RTK, um, you know, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you can't use Wi-Fi assisted GPS. It is completely standalone and that's, that's kind of nice. And you know, it's not as expensive as having to manage your own RTK network. Um, and it's also got some software that comes with it um, for testing. Um, and you can, uh, you know, check the, check the, um, th this example is for the eval board, but of course it'll work with just the raw module. It just takes the US, UART data, you know, you can connect it over to a USB to UART converter and um, use it to um, play around with your module. And you can even see they use little flags for all the different constellations um, in the uh, satellite tracker. Available on DigiKey. It's Here's in stock. the part number and the short URL. You can have this now. And it's very competitive um, with mm. other similar <laughs> GPS uh, module makers. So they're definitely going in uh, pretty strong. Ironically, um, getting a six DOF sensor is about the same price as this GPS uh, GNSS module. So um, do check it out. I got some samples coming on the way as well. Um, you know, either grab the module and you'll have to add your own antenna and, you know, your own circuitry, or just get the all-in-one eval board. It comes in a nice metal case um, and you just mount it, you know, add an external antenna and, and you're ready to rock. And that's this week's Ion MPI. Hi, on MPI.